All right, well, Pat, thank you for coming on today and giving us time to interview you. I know you have a busy schedule with your film coming out on Lifetime. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> it's Julie Ragsdale. So, you know, we met you uh, about 2010, probably at Azul restaurant in Palm Springs. You were here for a film. Um, then we all went to San Diego one time for five dysfunctional a people in a car, which is a right. hilarious short film. My favorite line. Good memory, is yeah, that that played the uh, the film gay and lesbian festival um, in San Diego. Yeah, San Diego film out. That it was great. You had a big crowd. I think it was sold out. It looked like six hundred people probably, and it looked pretty full. Yeah, it was a big big theater too. Yeah, it was a good screening. And you won best international uh, short film. I was looking up on film out, and that I'd forgotten that. I forgot that too. <laughs> I forgot. That's great. Yeah. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. San Diego is a good town. So hopefully yeah. we'll be back with some of your films in the future for some of those events there. Definitely. Yeah. And hopefully I can travel in the future too. Yeah, that would be really great. Yeah. yeah. Well, Pat, um, one of our favorite all-time movies really was Guidance. I mean, we love all your films. We've become fanatics on Guidance. Oh, we binge on Guidance. <laughs> We've watched it a hundred times, probably. Oh, great! Thank you. That's nice. Maybe not a hundred, but yeah, we showed it to all our friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a must. It's fun, but uh, we're here today to talk about your new film, that's um, the Christmas setup. So you were the director of this film. You probably had more to do with than just directing, I would imagine. But can you tell us a little bit how that film came about? Yeah, I. Well, I heard about it um, this summer. And I'd met with the executive producer, Danielle Von Zernick, uh, over Zoom, um, because she's based in LA. And it was shooting in Ottawa in Canada, which is where I was born. Um, and I believe I read the treatment first. Um, and it was great because I had talked with the writer as well. And it was a bit collaborative, like he's, um, He's a great writer of these Christmas movies and other other films as well. And it was the, one of the first uh, jobs that I had where I didn't write it myself, okay. but I was pretty involved in the casting and and it was very collaborative in terms of once the actors got involved and um, it was just an overwhelmingly positive experience. Uh, I had a lot of fun shooting it and we shot it during the pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, but it was very, very safe. Right. Um, and yeah, I mean, I was there throughout the entire edit and sound mix and everything. So I was pretty heavily involved. Pretty busy um, there for a few months, huh? <laughs> what did you say? I was like pretty busy there for a few months. Yeah, which is quick. Yeah, it was shot in um, September and October. We wrapped October 9th and it airs in two days on December 12th. So you Amazing. can imagine how fast it was put together in post-production. But it was pretty intense and we were able to give it the love that it needed in a short amount of time. That's how some great films are done really because they just spiral into uh, existence and they're just awesome. Yeah. You know, Definitely. I was gonna ask you about the two actors, uh, Ben Lewis and Blake Lee. One of my mm -hmm. first impressions were, how did you direct them to be look like they were such a, a couple? They really looked like they had a lot of chemistry. Well, the great thing which made my job easier was they are married. Okay. So we, we weren't worried about their chemistry at all because they had it, uh, obviously, because they're in love. And, but the thing is they've been together for 10 years. So what we had to do was play around with their comfort level as characters. Mm -hmm. So it was about reminding that me as a director I had to remind them to be a bit awkward and nervous around each other and sneak little looks you know, because you're not that comfortable with each other and you haven't seen them naked yet. So you're just no. taking a little peek wherever you can, you know? So that was really fun and they were really great to work with. Um, and they had never been in a film together before. So it was a kind of exciting new thing for them as well. What a great thing for you too, to be a director and have to kind of turn things inside out for a change or go the opposite direction in a way. So good job. Absolutely. Yeah, it was like reverse engineering their, their <laughs> relationship. And another thing was Ellen Wong, who plays uh, Ben's character's best friend. She looks they... great, by the way. Pardon me? She looks great in the, in the trailer. Yeah, definitely. But uh, he, uh, they've been, been, been friends for 10 years as well. So every, they were already so comfortable with one another and everybody had this great chemistry 
Oh, so they were friends already. already. I'm sorry. So they already were in a friendship circle, I guess. Huh? Oh, yeah, no. they like Ben, Blake, and Ellen. I think have known each other for a decade. Oh, cool. Well, wow. So it was like everyone was working with their friends, mm -hmm. uh, and Chad Connell, who plays the brother, he knows Ben, and they go way back. Right. And I know Ben from, I think, seven years ago. We had met at the Toronto Film Festival when Guidance played, because he had another film that he directed that was played. So everybody was really comfortable with one another and had good chemistry just inherently. Right. And then when Fran Drescher came in, um, she's just so warm and kind and loving that everybody just, it just kind of felt like a, like a family. She has and she kind of yeah. Yeah, well, she, she mentioned her name. People, everybody says she's so warm-hearted, and her character sometimes plays something a little jaded. But she actually is just a really wonderful person, from what we hear from everybody. Yeah, and I didn't know because it's like you have the friend Drescher persona, and then you don't know right. how that's going to be. And so I was a bit nervous, but she was so great. I, I'm she, grateful, and she you know, opens remember. that trailer. She opens that trailer with kind of a boom. Yeah, like, all right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. She's good. She's good. Yeah, she's great. Let's take a look at the trailer. All right. December 12th. I'm headed back to Milwaukee. My mother is thrilled. Oh, you look so skinny! Feel like a teenager again. Do you mind staying here because the Christmas tree is being delivered? Ah! Patrick Ryan? When I saw him, I almost died. I'm sure it was just all in your head. No, literally, I fell down the stairs. <laughs> you okay? Fine. Let's go. I think my mom just stays awake at night thinking of ways to publicly humiliate me. I think you look adorable. It's Christmas, it's Christmas, it's at Lifetime, Christmas love is for everyone. Outlast Psycho. Mom, I don't need you meddling in my social life. Oh, hi, Patrick. Fate that we cross paths. Fate for Kate. I'll just lead you two boys to it. <laughs> Ben Lewis, Blake Lee, Ellen Wong, Chad Connell, and Fran Drescher. I don't have to ask Santa for anything this year. I already got it. The Christmas Setup premieres Saturday, December 12th at 8. It's Christmas! Part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime 24 7 holiday movies all season long. Great. Well, that was a fun trailer, Pat. So <laughs> well put together. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't I didn't have much to do with the editing of the trailer, but I was really happy with it. Uh, kind of hit all the, it hit the comedy very well, which is, yeah. which is great. <laughs> it leaves you wondering, does he go to London or not? You know, it does kind of leave you lingering. Well, I got to see it because what happens? Got to see it. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing that's funny is it's not that different from other Christmas movies. It, it's like, there's no, the stakes are pretty low. And I think it's been a pretty hard year for everybody that I feel like, you know, I think that people enjoy that there's not a lot of trauma in this movie. Oh, good, okay. <laughs> because it's been such a hard year, so. Yeah, we've had it, yeah. Yeah, but I'm excited to see it, and I can't wait to see it, Pat. But um, do you have anything in closing, like you want to mention maybe to other filmmakers, how they might could improve or get on track with their filmmaking? You've done such a great job in your career. Um, in terms of advice, I always say, um, in terms of directing and, and storytelling, it's really about keep doing it and getting better and better. Because um, you, you learn by making mistakes. And I find that writing is a really great way to hone your skills as a storyteller, both as a director as well, because you really learn about structure and character and all the things that matter while you're writing but writing doesn't cost a lot of money like making a big film. Right. So I always say just really hone your skills as a writer because it does help you as a storyteller, as a, as a director. But now with new technology, I think that with, you know, iPhones being so high quality that I, I just say, make a movie, get your <laughs> friends together and make your own movie because, you know, amazing films have, been done on these tiny little formats like Tangerine and these amazing movies that have done very, very well for little money with non-professionals, right. you know? So I, I, I just say like, go out there, play around and write and direct what you love and want to see.